Greetings everyone, I am Sebastian Northern. 3.4 update just dropped and we got a new skin for Kamisato Ayaka. And there is one question that is on everybody's lips. Will this character ever be a playable character? Only time and I will tell, probably not. But yes, about the Ayaka skin. And as we all know, I'm a bit of a sucker for skins, I like to talk about them, I in fact have always hoped that Hoyovers would put more skins into the game, even outside of Lantern Rite right, and the Summer Festival and whatnot. However, when we get one, you know I gotta talk about it. But you know, it's a new year, it's a new me, spending money on cosmetics, spending gems on cosmetics, you know. Nah, that's the old Sebastian. You don't expect me... Now this was just old footage from my Diluc video, like come on, did you expect me to really just go back on me? I told you, it's a new year, it's a new me. Face it, there's no way to make me- Oh, come on. Now that we got in that kind of bad opening skit out of the way, let's talk about Ayaka skin. Kind of porcelain-like, really smooth, glistening with icy cold texture, truly the skin of- Hey, nope, nope, not the creepy one, the actual- Oh my- So this new skin gives Kamisato Ayaka a Fontaine travel look. Which, I've never met anyone from Fontaine, so sure, let's go with that. The biggest and most noticeable thing about this skin is the hair, in my opinion. Going from the long ponytail to this short and neat, I should say, hairstyle is very noticeable, in my opinion. And also, she has a hat. Kind of a travelly hat, instead of that small samurai thing on my wall. The style of her dress is somewhat similar to the old one, as it still holds also the bow tie on the back that holds her vision, which makes sense. She has also covered her legs and is now wearing, instead of sandals, more comfortable traveling boots, meant for travel. Although with those heels I would not go traveling anywhere. Never worn heels, guys, never worn. There are also a lot more finer details like looking at the buttons on the coat, looking at the jewelry around the neck, and looking at the cute little bow ties on her hair. A lot of minor details, in my opinion, that, well, I think they are also neat addition to the skin, but on a more larger scale. There are many positive things that I want to say about this kit. There's some negatives, though, don't get me wrong. However, I want to clear out one thing first. This is not a financial value thing. There's no way for me to know how much this skin is worth. Like, it is, like, a ro less, about 10 wishes worth. Little less if you buy it now, like... Do you think that that much crystals from your Velkin moons or whether you use 25 dollars euros to buy it from the shop? I don't know, do you ever play with Ayaka? Do you even own Ayaka? How should I know that? I, all I'm saying is, feel free to listen to what I say, look at the character of skin in action, and then make your decision already, or if you already bought it then... Then listen to my ramble and wonder whether it was worth it or not. At the end of the day, if you're happy with it, it was worth it. So as I said before, I think there are more positive things that I have to say for this skin than negative. But before all that, I have to do something that you rarely see on the internet. So buckle up, boys, because this is something you rarely see anyone do. I will admit, I was wrong. I was willing to bet real Monopoly money that the next skin we would get would not be for any limited time character. I would, honest to God, would have bet so much Monopoly money on the fact that we would get a, their Kiki or Mona, like... And that would have opened up a whole new can of worms. First of all, I don't have Monopoly. I have no real money to buy Monopoly. Uh, do you take Monopoly checks? Wait, that might actually be a Monopoly. There's so many random Monopolies these days. Anyway, I think I'm getting off topic, so... Uh, let's get right back to it. So I've been having this reoccurring nightmare about Auntie Agatha trying to eat me. Nope, nope, that wasn't it. So there you have it. I was wrong. And I'm so happy that I was wrong. Honestly, for the long term, I think it is better that we start getting more limited time 5 star characters as skin options rather than the standard banner ones. Because in my humblest of opinions, limited time 5 star characters are more played and more popular among the player base than the standard banner ones. Though I will say that standard banner characters are the ones that people most likely own, that doesn't mean that when you get one that you end up playing with one. Again, depends on the player, I think that the limited time 5 star characters getting skins is better. But about the positives, that the things that I really like about this skin. Now the biggest thing that I really like about this character's skin is that it gives, in my opinion, the character a completely new feeling and vibe to playing with it. Now yes, you can argue that the color schemes are kind of similar, which, I mean, fair. But the point I'm trying to get across is that, honestly, Amisato Ayaka's original skin just screams Inuzuma with the samurai looks like a little bit on the nose, I guess, but that's not the point. My point is that if you had never seen Kamisato Ayaka or her Inuzuma skin, and this was introduced as a Fontaine character, you would honest to god feel like this is a Fontaine character and it feels to Fontaine and it has a Fontaine vibe. Now the second thing that I like about this skin is the, its price. 
Now there's someone out there like, but isn't this a lot for just a cosmetic? Well, that's a relatively question, but what I actually can compare this to is the fact that they did not do what they did with the Deluxe skin. Because the Deluxe skin is way more expensive than the other skins due to the fact that it has some couple fancy different animations and couple different voice lines, which in my opinion did not warrant the price increase. Honestly, I would have still preferred they kept the animations and the voice lines, but kept the lower price point, but then again I am the consumer, not the seller. And I will admit that the fact that the animations require a separate work to put into them, and the voice lines require the voice actor to come, you know, to the office, or you know, they used leftover voiceover lines and whatnot. I don't know how they got those voice lines. I hope that they hired the voice actor to do them again, rather than use some leftover voice lines. But do you, do you think I have an inside man on the Hoyaverse? Come on! I, I do, you got me. Unfortunately, he speaks only in Chinese, and I have no idea what he's saying. No, of course I don't have one. Come on! Oh, sorry guys, I was on the phone. What were we talking about? Right, the final thing I want to mention is the attention to detail. I really like that. Going through the trouble of completely redoing this character's hair, which honestly, still looking at it right now, it gives the character, in my opinion, such an incredible vibe that wasn't there before, and I like it. Especially when compared to other skins of the same price value. Dilok did technically get a new hair doing his skin as well, but it wasn't nearly as clear as with this one, and it didn't really create a different vibe, in my opinion. But yes, maybe this skin doesn't help anyone to clear the abyss any easier. Maybe this skin, you know, sprint animation is not something that you get to see anywhere else besides the abyss. Oh my god, just look at her sprint. The fact remains that Ayaka has the most deadliest of sprints. Just look at her. <laughs> oh my, and this never gets old. Okay, it got old. But as I have presented some of the things that I like, there's obviously some things that I think could have been or should have been different. Now, a huge thing I want to say is that this is mostly personal opinion, as skins tend to be. Like, there's not really any, you know, data that I can draw from this skin other than the color palettes. And, well, I mean, I can also use my eyes as well and say, yep, it looks pretty damn similar in the color schemes, but eh. Now, the first thing I want to say is, I think I preferred the original skin. I know, it's shocking, right? I don't know, I just honestly felt like when I still look at the original skin and this skin, I think I just simply like the samurai look and I think it really fits the character, you know, as a whole. Now, that doesn't mean that I do not like the Fontaine look, I think the Fontaine look is pretty good. And it, as I said, it gives a different vibe because I think there are some people that honestly prefer the, have the Fontaine look other than the samurai Inuzuma look, but I personally prefer the samurai Inuzuma look. Which makes me question that this might be the case for many other, or at least some other people who look at the skin and feel like, well, why should I buy a skin when I already like the original look much better? To which I say, yeah! The second thing that I kind of criticize, kind of not, is kind of unfair, kind of fair, is the fact that I think that skin should have more than just, well, this cosmetic look. I think that, for instance, what they did with Dilok, well, they added the uh, idle animations and the voice lines. I don't think that was the thing I'm going for, but for instance, what they did with Dilok was that they switched the elemental skills color to be a darker flame. I think they should go with that line, but to a more extreme. With Kamisato Ayaka, for instance, since her blade is already purple and whatnot, and she is from Inuzuma, the country of lightning, I think that it would actually be a kind of refreshing to see something of a radical color scheme switch to maybe completely purple. Just saying, maybe the purple ice thing. Well, it, it doesn't actually matter, like, I've always said this. If it does nothing to change the game mechanics or add anything added value and it's purely cosmetic, you can be, in my opinion, extremely radical with it, because at the end of the day, it changes nothing. And by nothing, I mean nothing fundamental, like it doesn't create a broken loop or a completely different character that is more powerful just because some guy bought a skin for it once. And last but not least, I wanna say is that the thing I really do not still like, and I say this about most of Hoyaverse's skin, I do not think they're radical enough. Now I'm not saying that they need to have strings or basically be naked or whatnot. What I'm saying is that they are very conservative and the skins have a tendency to well, not really explore their full potential. Like, for instance, I have seen many, many skins of Raiden Shogun in a very tasteful two-piece swimsuit. 
I do not think that that would cause an insane uproar. Like, oh my god, somebody has a... There's a woman on the beach. She has a two-piece swimsuit. Somebody get her. You get my point? So ultimately what I'm gonna say is that they could go a more lengths to do something that feels way more different than, you know, just these subtle changes and the, and the color scheme is... Oh, well, now it's a lighter blue, I guess. Also just want to critique the fact that why Kamisato Ayaka? I mean, I know why, because she's one of the most popular characters played in the game and they have statistics on that. But why right now when there's an al Haid Ham, Ham and Zhao banner? Why the fuck would you not put Ayaka in the banners then? I mean, it probably has something to do with the fact that, you know, it's a Liyue Lantern Festival, so they only want to have rerun characters from Liyue. And, you know, following the fact that they only release two skins a year, one during the Lantern Ride, one during the Summer Stravaganza, let's call it that, for the lack of a better name. But I think that's kind of stupid, and I think they're locking themselves into an unnecessary box. Honestly, just make more, you know, mo go more radical with skins and make them released, like, maybe four times a year. Two, hmm? Then not be locked inside of specific themes and whatnot of the Lantern Festival release dates and whatnot, because honestly I think it is odd that there's a Kamisato Ayaka skin on the shop, but not on the banner, because if you buy a skin and you don't have Ayaka, well, guess what, now you get a skin and nothing to do with it. But there you have it, as a final conclusion to this whole kerfuffle. Kerfuffle? That doesn't sound right. Anyway, I want you to have this. If you like Kamisato Ayaka and her original look, I hope that you do not feel the need to buy. There is no reason. It doesn't actually add anything to the character if you already like the original skin. And if you have a Kamisato Ayaka and you like the character's new skin, I hope that if you end up buying it, you get exactly what you want for and you're happy with it. But yes, thank you so much for watching and if you like this kind of thing, I've also done a thing about Diluc's skin. Same thing, kind of discussion about skins and jo make jokes about laser eyes. Trust me, it makes sense. It doesn't. And if you like me just talking about skins and why there's not enough of them in Genshin, there's also a link to that, I think, popping up somewhere. It'll be there. Or not. You can find it. I hope. But yes, I do hope that you enjoyed the video. But me, personally, I'm going to go explore the new desert area with my brand new Ayaka skin. Can't believe I get to explore the new area, the new desert area, while looking at this beautiful, beautiful new Ayaka skin. Well... There it is, in its full glory. <sighs> Guys, why do I always lose?